Hi everyone, welcome to Bonus Game. Today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag, so we're going to hop into it. In 2023, I've read 56 books, so the first question is the best book I've read so far this year, and this was really hard to start with, so I'm going to go with Renegades. Even though I just read this, like, at the end of last month, I love it. This is a YA sci-fi fantasy type. It's a uh, comic book-esque superheroes, supervillains. So it's a dual POV. The girls that are supervillains, the boys, the son of superheroes. And she decides that in order to bring the supervillains back to power, to disrupt this kind of age of the superhero, she is going to go undercover into their headquarters, pretend to enroll in like superhero training, and take them down from the inside. Well, she gets placed on his team and he's like the son of like the head superheroes and then it's just like the conflict between their morals and kind of what they think they should be doing and what they think society needs and how much should society be uh, defending and providing for itself versus when should other bodies step in what is the autonomy of a, like a person with superpowers and is it only because they're now useful to society like it is such a good commentary i haven't even listed them all it is just oh it is so good it kept me entertained with all like the cheesy like co nods to comic books or superheroes you know or even like superhero franchises and movies while also being that incredible commentary so i would 100 percent recommend it to everyone else i don't care that it's a young adult it's good for any age so the best sequel I've read so far is Restless Slumber. Guys, I've read some good sequels. Like Arc Enemies is right behind me. That's the second one of the Renegade series. That was a really good sequel too. But my best of the year was Restless Slumber because the first book did not pull me in. It really let me down. It was a flop. It wasn't engaging. It wasn't enticing. And I had bought the first and second together. So I was like, might as well just read the second. And the second was comparatively so good. I... I'm obsessed. I do you have the physical copy? I'm absolutely obsessed with the cover. I'm absolutely obsessed with the story and where the series is going. I bought the second two. They're down here lower. Ah, uh, love it. So as it's the best sequel, I can't really get that much into it. But in terms of the series itself, it's a fairy series with other creatures. So our main protagonist of Fortuna, she is a creature of some sort. You find that out. And she is basically dragged into the fairy world to rescue her younger brother and she has to compete in these trials to gain enough power to kind of save him from his uh, predicament, let's say. It is really, really good. Intro, it's weirdly paced, and the idea and the concepts are there, but the execution's not. In the second one, it really hits its pace and hits its stride. So, yes, love. Ah! We love a little petty, vengeful, powerful, ah, protagonist. Can't get enough of it. The third question is a new release I haven't read yet. There's so many, you guys. I'm so bad at keeping up with new releases, okay? But um, earlier, the Ambrosia was released, and that is something I keep telling myself I'm going to pick up next, and then I just don't. But it is something I want to get into. So it is the sequel of Frost. And again, it's a sequel. I can't really get into what that one's about. But Frost is a... <laughs> Actually, it's another... It's another fairy series. And it was so good. I find a lot of fairy series to be, like, kind of mid-tier. The bar is so high for me now. But Frost really hit, really met that bar. So it is a fairy world reality TV show kind of for the humans. And the uh, Fae Prince is going to pick a bride on this like reality TV show because the Fae need resources and this is how they're going to go about it. And he stumbles across this girl that's absolutely obliterated a bar and like embarrasses herself in front of him. And then he's like, I will pay you to enter this competition and win so that I have full control over like you find out his motives but guys it was so good okay there was like the enemies to lovers but really it was just bitterness to lovers um there was like the they challenges and trials which is a theme i love um it was like he you don't want to fall but you do kind of thing Ugh, it was great it was top tier i was so excited for the sequel to come out actually when i read it i thought the sequel was already out and it was not no i was like ah, i need this right now but then i had to wait and then i haven't picked it up yet so why are you telling me why? But that is a new release that I haven't gotten to. So the fourth question is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Um, there's a lot of good books coming out. Tell me why my mind immediately went to Sinners Atoned. Like when I was going through and making this list, I was like, Sinners Atoned. Why? But that's what we're going with. <laughs> so Sinners Atoned is the fourth book in the Sinners Anonymous series. It follows the third brother and in that series the second and third book follow the same brother and that is my favorite mafia romance. I'm utterly obsessed with it. I've talked about it in so many videos. I just love them. It's a mafia romance series. 
it has like underlying themes of like luck and dealing with like grief and your trauma um of course you have like your super possessive alpha hole male characters um but the women in it they're strong they're feisty they're fun they're quirky or they're really good at banter or you know what they're just kind of criminals and we're here for it okay we love it anyways the fourth book comes out in october and it follows the third brother and the third brother is so dark and tortured and like actually messed up but you don't really know why and you don't know what's happened and the other brothers don't know what hap what's happened so there's a lot of like mystery surrounding him but i'm like absolutely enticed by where his story will go and then add on to that the girl who like will be his kind of like opposite is like so sweet so soft so nice but like you can tell she's coming from like a place of like trauma and a super dark past and i want to know what her dark past is and i want to see how their demons play together and i'm absolutely over the moon so there's a lot of good books coming out later this year but I, that one for some reason is the one that really jumped out to me is like the one i'm sitting on waiting for the most the fifth question is my biggest disappointment that is 100 percent. i don't even need to think about it the last wish okay it's the prequel in the witcher series I was so excited to get into this book. I got it for Christmas and I read 30 pages and I put it down and then I picked it up the next year and I was like, why did I ever put this down? This is gonna be a high fantasy. I love the show. This is gonna be great. Um, I owned the first two books already and I read the prequel and I was like, wow, I absolutely hate every single thing about this. So much so that it has wrecked the show for me. So the premise of the book, if you haven't seen the show, is he is essentially a monster hunter and he tells short stories pretty much every chapter of a different time in his, in his life where he fought a different monster and then in between those chapters is like the running arc of he's recovering at this nunnery so he's talking to people. I hated it so I'm not going to give you much of, more of a description but it was super sexist, super predatory, super like gross. Um, it was gross against women, it was gross against children, everything about it was just not for me, it was not the vibe, it was not what I wanted, I lost all respect for the main character, I lost all respect for the series. Yeah, it just kind of wrecked it for me. Yeah, that was actually really upsetting. And I did a whole video, actually, if you want to go watch it, on all the reasons I hated it. But yeah, definitely the biggest disappointment of the year for me. My biggest surprise of the year, I actually read in January, and it was Heated Rivalries. So Heated Rivalries is a MM hockey romance. Yeah, we'll get there and it follows two guys who kind of are on par with each other for their career and they're both kind of expected to go number one in the draft they played against each other in world juniors they end up drafted to like two like um traditional enemy teams kind of thing so they have this huge built-up rivalry um from the fans from scouts from coaches from teammates from everything because really they're the top two in their age group in their range and they kind of fall into each other a little bit and then they have like a friends to benefits kind of thing and then the story picks up from like seven years after they met after they kind of had this like friends with benefits thing going on after the one character has kind of like explored and like accepted like his sexuality and all that and then you pick it up as the relationship starts to build and kind of grow from there but they're really are trapped by these parameters of like this is their career and this is their life and there's no way the world will accept that because hockey is very very homophobic still anyways um, it was the biggest surprise to me because I don't even know why I picked this book up. I don't do sports romances. I can't really, I can't really stand them. But I picked it up. Furthermore, I especially don't do hockey romances because I know the game really, really well. And most hockey romances that I know of don't. So you read stuff where like I'll see a reel and I'll be like, what? What is even happening in the play? Because you're describing two entirely different things that are going on. When they can't get the sport right, it really takes me out of it. Um, so why did I pick up a sports romance? And especially why did I pick up a hockey romance? I have no idea. But I absolutely loved it. I ended up giving it five stars. It was so freaking cute. Like my jaw hurt after reading it because I was smiling so hard in it. Oh, it was so cute. So adorable. And the writer, I sorry, I'm blanking on her name, but she absolutely nailed the sport she understood the game she understood the politics she understood like like the international politics politics as well as the domestic politics as well as team politics she understood all of it she definitely had a really good grasp of the game herself or someone on her team did but oh my god i did i appreciate that did it immerse me in the story and did i become absolutely obsessed and in love with these two characters oh so cute definitely my biggest surprise of the year still haven't found a sports romance that even makes me want to read it 
but I would be picking up the rest of her series eventually. Question seven is my favorite new author or debut author. This one was hard, okay, but I think I'm going to go with a pretty basic an answer and go Emily Henry. So she was new to me. She's not a debut author, but she was new to me. I picked up Bee Treef, and that was my first book of hers, and I picked that up early on in 2023, and then the, the next month I picked up Book Lovers, and then I reread Book Lovers, and both of those are incredible. I'm obsessed with the both of them. I'm obsessed with her writing. I'm obsessed with kind of like the parallels she plays with um, the actual like romance community and rom-coms in general, both on like the funny side and on like the less funny side. I felt attached and embraced by her characters. They were fully fleshed out and well-rounded characters that you just wanted to love and you just wanted to love each other. And you just wanted everyone to be happy. I just, oh, they were so cute. Question eight is my newest fictional crush. My, my newest fictional crush is Manson Reed from the Loser series by Harley LaRue. Oh my god, do I love this man. Like, absolutely love this man. So he comes from a background of neglect, abuse, uh, trauma, all of this, but he's not letting it define him. He is actively see seeking help in terms of like therapy. He's surrounding himself with a supportive, loving community. He's communicating with the people that are important to him and he's not closing himself off to the world. He acknowledges his past. He acknowledges the tendencies that he might go towards because of his past and he is actively trying to fight that and create a life for him and his loved ones that he can appreciate, respect, and love. And I am obsessed with the level of effort he puts into it. I'm obsessed with his level of self-reflection. Oh, I just love him. He's also, he's so supportive, he's encouraging, he's exploratory, he's open-minded. He comes from a town, a small town where he was bullied by um, his classmates and schoolmates, like to severe ex extremes. Um, but again, that doesn't, he doesn't let that define him. He doesn't let that close him off to the world. He doesn't, you know, hold a grudge forever. Like he's like the model of forgiveness and everything. He absolutely loves the people that love him. He absolutely supports whatever they do and whatever they want to do. He's so freaking healthy. He's a perfect model of consent. Like literally, probably the best model of consent I've ever seen. I am utterly obsessed with this man. Utterly obsessed with this man. If you haven't read the Loser series, go read it. But check triggers and I would recommend having a background of dark romance. But anyways, love him. Absolutely obsessed with him. Oh, he just, oh, I just really want to hug him. I really, I really want to hug him. He's so great. He's so great. Okay, number nine is books that made you cry. I don't read to cry. Okay, I'll watch a movie where a dog has a limp and I'll cry. <laughs> so it doesn't take a lot. And I don't really love to read books that make me cry because as you can tell from my channel head, welcome to my escape. I like to escape. Okay, I don't need to be crying in my escape. I don't know if a single book has made me cry this year. Um, I would say though, the one that has made me kind of like feel the most poorly has been A Lesson in Chemistry, which I actually just finished two or three days ago, but um, it made me hate the world a little bit, as, as one does, but you know, also made me love the characters and appreciate the struggles of women in the 1950s. A Lesson in Chemistry was honestly so good. The book follows Elizabeth Dot, who is a woman in the 1950s, 1960s, and she is a chemist, except she's a woman in the 1950s so they don't respect her as a chemist they don't treat her as a chemist they treat her as a secretary so it is really her like going through life and having to deal with the constant sexism the constant ridicule the constant underestimating the constant lack of resources everywhere she goes and everywhere she turns um there's other women who turn on her there's of course the men and then there's men that support her and women that support her and she has a daughter and the whole book like <laughs> It makes me hate society, but at the same time love the perseverance and really like give for me like to think back on that generation of women like with a lot more like respect and appreciation for what they went through because often when you think of like sexism it's either like what we're facing currently today or like the medieval times I kind of find um, and we just kind of forget that you know the 1950s were a pretty dark time for women so in terms of that, it was a really incredible read. I would recommend to anyone. It definitely hooked me. I loved the writing style. It was a bit odd, to be honest. Jumped points of view, like, a lot. And sometimes you got the dog's point of view. But don't let that turn you off because it honestly it worked so well for this book. Everything worked perfectly in this book. It didn't make me cry, but it definitely made me um, feel the most 
realistic of this world kind of emotion. And the tenth question is a book that made you, me happy. Okay, well again, I read for escape. Welcome to my escape. You see what, you see what I did there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was a deliberate choice. So most books tend to make me happy unless they make me very, very angry. So I'd say anything that I've ever rated over four stars, like so four stars or higher, um, made me happy. That's why I rated it that high. But for the effect of this question, I'm going to choose Liar by Fiona Cole. And this isn't because I think it's a stellar read or it made me happier than anything else. It's because I picked this book up in such a foul mood. And I picked this book up because I needed something to do to like keep myself from burying my head in the sand. And it pulled me out of that mood so quickly and actually turned my whole day around, turned my whole everything around and was just so much fun. Is it a groundbreaking book? No. Is the book for everyone? Probably not. Did the book have its issues? Yes. But for me, in that moment, it was exactly what I needed and definitely so far in the year, it's the book that has brought me up from the lowest of low that I was at. So Liar is a erotic romance and it's like a sex club erotic romance type of thing. So it follows Kent and Olivia and Kent is Olivia's uncle's best friend. So it's kind of like dad's best friend trope except uncle's best friend except she's way closer with her uncle than her father and so it's a big age gap in there and they have a spicy night at um, the sex club before the book even takes place but there is a novella and then they don't see each other for two years and then they um, run into each other at a family dinner and they're like what? But then they just they can't help their attraction to each other they haven't gotten over it and I just that's pretty much it and then you follow them through their romance there's a little bit of like um boss employee trope in there as well I just thought it was so fun it was so fun and it was everything I needed and it made me happy so that's this that's this question so the 11th question I'm gonna cheat it a little bit okay but the 11th question is the most beautiful book you've acquired this year um, I have gotten over 80 books this year. I have lost count of how many books I've gotten. So this one was really, really hard and I'm obsessed with pretty books. So I have narrowed it down to three, but I'm organizing like this. So my prettiest book that I've acquired at home is Supernova. I haven't read this one yet. This is the third in the Renegades trilogy that I started the video with um, that I've said I'm holding off on reading because I don't want the world to end. I am obsessed with this cover. I am in love. It's like reflective on the lightning. Oh, I am just, I love it. I love it. I love the little pun of the title. I love everything about it. I feel like on my shelves now, although this was very, very hard, I would say this is my most gorgeous cover at home. The most gorgeous cover at school. See, see how I'm organizing this? My most gorgeous cover at school, I would say is Restless Slumber. I am obsessed with this cover. It's like fan arty indie art vibes but on the cover of a book it makes me feel happy and joy and it is just so gorgeous to me i love the colors i love the swirls of her throne i love how like it's true like it's almost like an exact scene from the book captured i love the slit in the dress i love everything about it oh i'd say at school that's my favorite cover and then because I'm just kind of obsessed with this already, I ordered a special edition. It's going to be my first special edition that I've like specifically gone out and gotten new, um, but I waited for this to be released and I sat there on my phone just waiting to click buy because it was gonna go so fast and I knew it. Um, and I did get it, but it does not ship out until October, but because I've already bought it, I wanna include it on this list. So I got the Mindfuck series. Uh, it's the collection and it looks so gorgeous. So in the caption below, I've linked the reel as well. Oh my god, guys. I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm in love. I can't wait for it to come in. I think it's gorgeous and I want the collection so bad. Mindfuck series is a collection of five books and they're all like novella length, I think. This is the collection. It's all of them together and it is like my favorite revenge series. I'm so excited that this is coming in. I love the edition, but I also just love the stories and I want to own it so freaking bad. So the Mindfuck series is following Lana Myers and she is a female serial killer. And I say female because there's not that many out there and it just, it's fun. So she has a list and she's out there getting her revenge and she is not hesitating whatsoever. And then she kind of runs into and starts a relationship with an FBI serial killer profiler who just happens to be working on her case. Tell me a greater love story. 
aside from the love story because I like that's cute and it has its moments for sure but I'm obsessed in love with Alana um yes you're like how are you rooting for a serial killer if you know her backstory you would root for her too so definitely check triggers going in it's just absolutely amazing and the end is so epic and I'm trying not to spoil anything but the end is so epic and I've never read a better revenge plot in my entire life and I am so immersed and obsessed with the series and Lana Myers is now one of my favorite characters of all time and I'm so so excited to get this book and then the last question is what books do you still need to read before the end of the year I say um the main priority is Wise Man's Fear. This is the second in the Kingkiller Chronicles. So the first was In the Name of the Wind. I read it in February. I got absolutely obsessed. I'm very slow to get into it. But I do want to crush the second one. I was so tempted to crush the, crush the second one while I was at school, but I know I owned this. So I was like, no, I'm going to go home and I'm going to read it. However, now it's just like not the vibe because it gave me like major academia vibes and really helped me study in the moment. Um, but it is summer right now, so I don't really want academia vibes. So I'm thinking I might actually push this for a fall read, but it will be read before the end of the year. And then, although I have put a hold on this series, I definitely do want to finish the trilogy. The hold is probably only going to last a couple more weeks before I can't take it anymore, and I just want to know what happens. Um, so I will read Supernova before the year is out as well. I want to finish Rage and Ruin because it has been on my currently reading list forever. I'm only 30 pages into it. But it is the spin-off of the White Hot Kiss series, and the White Hot Kiss series is what got me back into reading in 2022. Um, I just picked up picked up the spin-off series too. I just picked up the spin-off series uh, too soon, um, so I needed to let the first series kind of die down in my mind before I really jumped into this one to give it its full appreciation. But now I'm back at home, so I have it in my hand. So I won't, definitely want to get through that one and get into another Jennifer L. Armentrout fantasy. And then I'd say the last that are kind of on my mind, at least that I have at home. Um, is Deadly Dream and Beautiful Creatures. So these two are the fourth and fifth of the Fortune of Sworn series. Uh, the second is Restless Slumber that I keep talking about. So again, Re Restless Slumber really brought me into the series and I really do want to get into these. Um, I'm a little worried they're not going to live up to my brain hype anymore um, and I absolutely love them being full of potential. <laughs> So I've put a pause on that series too, but this is what happens in my mind is why I don't finish series. But I do really want to get into these and I will finish them before the year is out. And that brings us to the end of the mid-year free go take. So I really loved doing this video. I loved reflecting back on everything I've read so far this year and uh, these questions were actually really hard for me to answer. And I tried so hard not to make it like two or three answers per question until it got to the beautiful book one. And then I was like, well... <laughs> I love pretty books. So I got more than one. What can I say? Obviously anybody else that wants to do this video, definitely do it. It was so so much fun to watch other booktubers do it, then to do it myself. Um, I will write all the questions in the caption below so you can just copy and paste from there. But thanks for sticking with me. How has your 2023 reading journey been? Um, what is your prettiest book? That is the question I want to know from everyone down in my comments below. What is your prettiest book? If you couldn't tell, I judge books by the cover. But that's all I got for now. I post videos every Friday, so don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications, because sometimes I post on Tuesdays when I'm feeling it. But I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye!